Fine Map channel, welcome. Right, today I'm going to be making a video in response to a question from a patron. They asked me about uh, removing fire scale, fire, fire stain, I call it, on silver. Is it specific to silver? I don't think I've ever seen it on gold. Um, I don't actually know exactly what's going on. I, I'm assuming there's copper content in the silver. It's always after you heat it, like I've just heated this up, I'm hoping that's going to be all fire stainy. I'll try and remove it off that. Um, but yeah, it leaves like a sort of bluey, purpley, grey like like kind of surface covering and it's really difficult to remove and unfortunately you usually find out about it at the last stages of making something like you're making something in silver and then you're going to polish it and you'll notice it's not coming up very nicely so you polish it a bit harder and then it takes it off and, uh, and then you've got a nice clean white polished part next to this grey horrible section and it looks a mess so you've got to do all the work and remove all the grey bit and it's hard work so I show you what has worked for me in the past like the specific tool I've got that actually polishes it off really well um, so yeah I'll get into it after I said thank you to a couple of new patrons I've got last few days we've got Leva Galuit sorry about the pronunciation of your name and uh, Paul so thank you very much guys really appreciate you becoming patrons patrons ask for patron support like genuinely enables me to continue making videos. So I'm so grateful to the patrons. So they really are an essential part of this channel continuing. Uh, yeah, patreon.com forward slash diamond mount. Uh, click the link in the description. You get a shout out on the next upload after you join. You get access to the new YouTube videos two weeks before they go public on YouTube. And official and classic, sorry, classic and official patrons, I should say in that order, will get access to all the full instructional guides. There's like 30 odd now. So they're like hour, between an hour, two hours, sometimes a bit more, two and a half hours. Uh, long like full instructional guide to make a piece like go in depth start to finish and uh, I'll show you how to make stuff like the traditional London way so let's get into it so before before I get going at the bench I'm gonna do a bit of research on what exactly is going on with the metal what causes fire fire stain I was called it fire stain but on the Kerner Craft website, they're saying, they're talking about fire scale and fire stain. I never really heard of both those. I never really thought about them being differently. So might learn something here. Uh, difference between fire scale and fire stain. Fire scale naturally develops during solar rays. Uh, okay, it sounds like that's just, they're just talking about how it metal goes black after, after heating it up. Yeah, just pickling it basically, fire scale. Okay, fire stain, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I always call it, fire stain. Uh, fire stain doesn't usually become apparent until the final stages of, stages of polishing your jewelry yet. Agree with that. Uh, you notice that the metal has blotches of pink, purple, or dark marks. Don't know about pink. Uh, unfortunately, unlike fire scale, fire stain cannot be removed by pickling the piece again. Yep. How do I get rid of it? Just, yeah, use an abrasion to fire it away. Yeah, okay, just go buff it off. Okay. Uh, right. Very very surface level bit of information there so next we found gano it's not gano skin it's gan ganoxin ganoxin i don't know what that word means <clears throat> a couple of paragraphs written by charles luton brain a fitting name because you may find out in a moment as i just did that he seems to try hard to make it sound make himself sound clever uh, very very wordy this is uh, fire scale is caused by oxygen combining with copper present in the silver copper alloy that's kind of what I would have assumed sterling silver alloy contains 925 parts out of a thousand parts silver and 75 parts out of a thousand parts copper bit wordy how about just saying 7.5% 75 parts out of a thousand uh, when alloy is exposed to oxygen in the air at higher temperatures during annealing or soldering procedures, the copper <sighs> the copper at the surface is converted into Cu20. Cu20 just means copper. So you basically just said during annealing and soldering procedures, the copper at the surface is converted to copper. Kubrick. <sighs> Cupri okay, hang on, right. Cuprous. <laughs> I think I'm just being dumb here. Uh, cu cu cuprous oxide, which has a reddish colour to it, and then the cupric oxide CuO, which is black. It is, however, not just the metal at the very surface that is affected, but deep inside the metal as well. Not sure if I agree with that. You can just polish it off, and it's not there anymore. It just just on the surface. Silver 
It's not like if you cut through it, it's not stained all the way through. It's just the surface. So I don't know if I agree with um, what has just been written there. Silver is the ability to absorb oxygen at high temperatures and conduct the oxygen to the interior of the metal itself, where it can bond with copper atoms present, thus causing deep fire scale to occur. So this is about dealing with it. Industry deals with the problem of fire scale a number of ways, most of which eliminate oxygen from the surface of the metal during the heating procedure. How are you going to do that? The solutions include heating in a hydrogen atmosphere where copper oxide, oh, that's a bit fancy for a jeweler's workshop. Production line work is sometimes placed on in titanium jigs on a moving conveyor belt which enters a hydrogen, nitrogen or ammonia gas atmosphere where heating for soldering occurs, the object that causes the same atmosphere and emerges at the other end. Whoa, I didn't know that was possible, so that's cool. Uh, obviously not going to be possible in a jeweler's workshop, like just filling your room up with uh, ammonia gas. <laughs> Doesn't sound very healthy to me. Uh, other approaches involve uses of fluxes sprayed through the flame while it is used on a piece. What? According to an Australian silversmith I met in Sydney, by having a precise mixture of gases which prevent fire scale and makes flux unnecessary yeah, what? That sounds a bit far-fetched to me. Uh, sometimes if a minimal number of solderings will be done, then a protective coating is placed on the work so that oxygen cannot reach the surface during heating. The protective coatings are usually based on boric acid. Should we just say flux? Just cover it in flux and then uh, see if that works. One production shop I worked in in Toronto used a large wire French fry basket which all items to be soldered were placed. This was held suspended in a rapidly boiling solution of boric acid and some borax mixed with water. After that, I, uh, this all sounds like a lot of faff. Okay, so I'm just going to skip to the conclusion. It says uh, several approaches to fire scale avoidance, creating oxygen free conditions during heating. Can't really do that in a workshop. Abrasive removal, that's what you're most likely going to be doing. Uh, they talked about just like plating over it as well. <laughs> no, that's not really an answer. Uh, the author, Mr. Brain, said uh, it deals with it in two ways, depending on the whir. He just brushes it and just has chooses a brushed finish. I don't think that's any kind of an answer. Um, but yeah, it says most jewelry object, objects can be polished to remove fire scale using bristle brushes in like sort of five to ten minutes. So there you go. It's just, just a little bit of extra work on a polisher motor. I really don't think it's worth faffing about with specially built kilns and gas-free atmospheric chambers and stuff. <laughs> just, just to avoid a little bit of extra polishing. That's quite extreme. Well, like are going through these like wacky carcinogenic corrosive chemicals and stuff. Just do a little bit of extra polishing. Uh, yeah, things, you're making something, you're doing a ring for someone, they want it polished, you've got to be polished, it's got to be done well. Uh, so, yeah, just get ready to do a bit of extra polishing. So anyway, I'll show you what works for me, get rid of it. So I've just got this bit of, uh, bit of metal. I bent it around. So buff it like that, give it a polish, I'll just get it a bit smoother and then we'll go to the polishing motor. You might see some fire stain on it. So what I'm going to do is use this old grease mop. So I'm not using any of my fancy blue and orange polishes and stuff. So most people are going to have this. So you're not going to be confused or thinking I'm removing it with anything special. Uh, so right, let's get this polishing going. My dodgy switch. It's getting really bad. like that. I can tell there's a bit of a surface finish on there that's not not right. I think I broke through that a little bit. Hang on. So this metal's not actually too bad. I was hoping to get a really clear 
difference between the polished and the, and the fire stain. But anyway, so say I've got that and that's all stained. You, you'll know it when you see it. It's got a weird sort of dark grey, bluey kind of it's basically surface finish on it. You've got to polish through it. So I think the best tools are these bristle brushes. You want quite a stiff one. This one, this one works, but they're, they're a bit soft on this one. These are the best. These are German bristles. Yeah, it just says Germany on that one. There's an old one. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, Bel Belotti, West Germany. The these seem to be good. And the more worn out they get, the more sort of stiff they are. So really worn out ones are, are really good tools as well. So um, yeah, let me just go straight to the worn out one. So I would just load that up with polish and then uh, you gotta keep the piece moving, yeah? Because they're stiff bristles, uh, they, they can cut into metal quite severely. So you gotta really move things around, in it? Go one way, then turn the piece around. Like that. So I'm, I'm, the way I move it, I'm thinking of just going like lines. Just go left, right, left, right, left, right, all the way across the surface. And you should, that has always proved, and that has always proved to be really good at getting rid of fire stain. But unfortunately the surface it leaves, because it's a bit scratchy, all different lengths and stuff, it is a bit liney, it's not a nice polish. So then you will have to go back to your usual polishing mops. Let me just do a bit now. Oh, this stupid thing. I really need to get a new polisher motor and a set of mills. This is all just crap what I've got. So give it another polish. Again, different angles. And there you go, you should be able to, <coughs> you should be able to end up with something nicely polished. So there you go, we've got a polished piece of silver again. Yeah, it can be a bit of a problem, fire stain, like these silver skull rings I used to make. Um, I, I, there was one I had fire stain, I was fighting against fire stain on one, one of those. And uh, because it's quite a complex shape and there's like sharp bits on there and stuff, I had to polish it hard, but really carefully because I don't want to like make it look all worn out. Silver is quite soft, something like that. You can easily over make it look over polished. It looks like a worn out second hand piece, even though it's actually new. You were just trying to make it look evenly shiny all the way around. Because once you've got a sort of patch where uh, there's fire stain, but you've already polished through it a little bit, it looks horrible. It looks all patchy and horrible. You've got to do the whole thing. And yeah, complicated shapes can be difficult to, to achieve it. So anyway, look out, look out for fire stain. Uh, basically, don't worry about um, ammonia gas chambers and stuff. <laughs> just just a bit of extra time but polish about motor. But yeah, you've got to do it carefully sometimes. Uh, yeah, so fire stain. Happy days.